Good afternoon. My name is Pastor Jeremy Shines, and this is I Am Loved Church. Let's pray. Lord, we come here to honor your word, to honor you, Father. Bless your word, Lord. Open our hearts, open our minds, open our spirits, open the atmosphere. Holy Spirit, you're welcome here. Bless this time that we have with you, Lord Jesus, in your name. Okay, turn your guys' Bibles to Acts chapter 16, verses 16 through 18. This message is actually called Paul and Silius in prison, but we're going to call it Spirit of Divination. Acts chapter 16, verse 16 through 18. As we were going to the place of prayer, we were met by a slave girl who had a spirit of divination and brought her owners much gain by fortune telling. She followed Paul and us crying out, these men are servants of the most high God who proclaim to you the way of salvation. And this she kept doing for many days. Paul having become greatly annoyed, turned and said to the spirit, I command you in the name of Jesus to come out of her, and it came out that very hour. Let's pray. Lord, bless this word. Help us exposit this word. Bring out the message of what the Holy Spirit wants to do here with us in this time. Give us wisdom to see with the eyes that you have, Lord, in your mighty Son's name, Jesus Christ. Amen. Okay. So, the spirit of divination. We're going to go line by line, verse by verse. As we were going to the place of prayer, we'll stop there. It's a fragment. It's a half a sentence, in other words. Every time you and I, whether we're in a physical place, like going to a church to go pray, right? They got prayer services, prayer times. We have some here we kind of done for a little bit. Every time you're headed towards prayer, the devil doesn't want you to go. The devil hates when we head towards prayer. That's what it says here. As we were going to the place of prayer, they have a place of prayer. And my next question is, do you have a place of prayer, a place, whether it's a physical place in your home or a place out somewhere in the desert or at a church or a friend's house, do you have a place of prayer? This is very important, okay? As they were going to a place of prayer, this is what happens. We were met by a slave girl. So she probably was an actual slave, but this is also a spiritual picture. She was a slave to the spirit of divination. So my next question is, are you a slave to Christ? Or are you a slave to some other spirit? And every other spirit really is a spirit of divination. Because Paul writes, he says, you're either a slave to the spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, or you are a slave to some other spirit. You're a slave either way, but this being a slave of Christ is actually freedom. But to be a slave of anything else is slavery. So she wasn't just a physical slave, I'm sure. She was a slave to the spirit of divination. And every spirit that opposes Christ is divination. Now, what is a divination spirit? It's witchcraft. It's manipulation. It's gaslighting. It's, uh, it's like a car salesman. They're not really giving you all the facts. They're not giving you the truth. It's an alternative motive, in other words. But let's go deeper into what that is. So this woman or slave girl had a spirit of divination and brought her owners much gain. So this is what the spirit of divination does. They are always looking to what they can gain. Catch that? The spirit of divination is always looking to what they can gain. That whether they're altars or crystals or whatever, whatever the, whatever their thing is, it's always about what I can gain for me, my physical self, my flesh. 
But do you ever notice that the altars of Christ are always what you lose? What you lose completely to completely alters and, and, and completely two different motives. What you can gain, that's the spirit of divination. That's the spirit of witchcraft versus what you can lose. Unfortunately, there are ministries only looking for what they can gain rather than what they can lose, what they can give. I don't want to go too far into that. But that's the, that's the idea here of the spirit of divination. She brought her owners much gain by her fortune telling. Fortune telling? Was she really telling fortunes? No, she was lying. There was a time in my life before I was a Christian, I was actually going to fortune tellers and I would pay them money. First, it doesn't seem like very much, but then it starts to increase more and more. And I lost a lot of money, probably like a little over $2,000 over the course of my unsaved life in giving these fortune tellers asking these fortune tellers to basically tell me what I wanted to hear. The Bible says in the last days, there'll be people paying people to tell them what they want to hear because they don't want to listen to the truth. They want not to hear the things that the scriptures have to say. They want to hear what they want to hear and they will pay people to comfort them in their lies. And this is what this is little girl's job was to do, this slave girl. Her job was to lie to people to tell them what they wanted to hear. You ever wonder why some ministries never get a leg up? <laughs> because they will, because they will, they won't tell you what you want to hear. They'll tell you the truth and you won't like it. And you'll go find a pastor, you'll go find a church that tells you what you want to hear. If you just give us money, we'll pray for you and you'll get healed, for example. If you just do this, this, and this, and this, you'll be accepted by God, for example. We know that's not true. Because only faith in Christ and what he did for us gets us saved. Nothing we do gets us saved or more or less qualified for heaven or for our calling. So this woman's spirit, the spirit of divination, is the spirit of, I'm going to tell you whatever you want to hear. Whatever your itchy ears want to hear. That's the spirit of divination. In order that you may get, that I may get something from you. You see, it always costs you something. Which is kind of a used car salesman, right? <laughs> That's the idea here. And so it's it really, in the day and age, whether this day and age or the day and age then, it always costs the person who they're telling these lies to money. As Jesus says, money is the root of all evil. They will create this elaborate story to get money from you. They'll create this elaborate system or scheme to get into your pockets. There's a lot of scammers, especially I think there always have been, but they're like upping their game these days. They're using like credit card accounts and all this stuff. They're using like Facebook and GoFundMes and uh, Cash App and all that stuff now. There's a lot of people that are scamming people, right? Unfortunately, there's just bad product out there that's just like, if you buy this, it'll help get rid of all of the fungi in your foot or something like that me and my wife actually bought something like that and it was literally just rusty like heater thing and you put it in water and it just made the water rusty and and they were and it was saying that it was getting that that was the fungi and it was actually just the rusty <laughs> there's a lot of scammers out there that, that's what we live in and, and it's all focused on gain it's all focused on money and that's what her job was and so here you have two different ideas, two different concepts. You have the gospel, which is free, totally free, right? God wants to give to you, even though you and I don't deserve it. And he gives it freely. And that's how our gospel is, is freely have you received, freely you give, right? 
we don't expect anything. No minister, they, 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 unless they're immature, like I was once, haggling you guys for money, like I was once, that ministry is probably not ordained by God. Because God will provide for his ministers and he will provide for his mi the, the ministry or for the church. I've heard of this thing called like consultation ministry. Jesus says, freely as you've received, freely you give. But the consultation ministry is, you give me money and then I'll minister the gospel to you. That's like, I'll pray for you if you give me money. <laughs> That's what she was doing. I will, I will give you a, a fortune teller. I'll tell you what you want to hear if you give me money. And so you have the ministry of, 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 of freedom that, that is this, I'm losing, that we are losing more than we're gaining. If we gain anything, we gain what we, it in heaven. Whereas you have the, the faulty ones, the spirit of divination, an evil spirit. This is what it is. It's an evil lying spirit, which this little girl had inside of her. So she is a slave to this demon and also a slave to their system. You have, so the way that they work is the way that the system of the world works. In order to serve the system of the world, you have to have the demons, well, maybe not every system, but particularly this one. Like, I don't think you could be a Christian or, right, filled with the Holy Spirit and, and, and basically do divination or fortune telling <laughs> without having that spirit dwelling in you. It comes with the territory. There's certain things that you have to invite into your body in order to do. The fruit of the spirit, the fruit of lust is sexual desire, for example. The fruit of alcohol is an, is an alcoholic addiction. It's, it's a spirit that you invite into you first before you commit the act. In other words, you believe the lie and then the action follows, just like we see in the garden. But Paul has the spirit of Christ. And so I give it up to Paul because he has a lot of patience here. This it says here, as we read in verse 17, she, the slave girl who has the spirit of divination in her, follows Paul and us, which I believe that this book was written by Luke, the physician, and Silius is with them at the same time. So maybe we may have more of them. She was crying out, these men are servants of the most high God. She was really, really irritating. And it says that she cried out in verse 18 for days. Going on for many days, this, this young slave girl with this evil spirit in her was following them every single day. Day. Unfortunately, if you're in Christ, you're following Jesus. Not everybody who follows you, like the Pharisees or this woman, this little girl who had this evil spirit in her, wants to be converted, for example. If you have a ministry, whatever your ministry is, whether good or big or small, not everyone who's following you is for you. They could be a Pharisee. Jesus had many Pharisees in his ministry. So did the apostles. And in here, Paul, he has a slave girl with a demon in her following him everywhere he's going. And, and she's not attracting good attention to his ministry. Even though she's saying, these guys are going to lead you to, are trying to lead you to the most high God. That makes me think like, wow, you know, there's a saying that goes, you know, I'm trying to remember it. Uh, it's a business guy. He would say, uh, basically it's kind of like any attention is attention or something like that. Negative attention, you know, negative something. <laughs> Dang, it's on the tip of my head. Anyways, uh, it could be good. It might not be good. But in this situation, I don't think it's good because Paul is getting irritated. Paul is getting frustrated. Paul has a lot of patience here. 
And this is very interesting here as we dive deeper. So she's following Paul and the other uh, disciples or apostles. She's being very irritating. She's saying, oh, these men are here to lead you to the most high God who proclaim you the way of salvation. And then she kept doing this for many days. Paul, having become greatly annoyed, turned aside to the spirit. Not to the girl. If you look close enough when you look at people, if you just really look at them intently, you can see a spirit in them. Now, I'm not going to say demonize every person. I'm not going to say everyone who you disagree with has an evil spirit in them. <laughs> but there's moments where some people you just look at and you're just like, I don't know, I saw something there. I've had several encounters of this where I saw an evil spirit in a person. And what the evil spirit would try to do is it would try to make you not see it. Because the moment you see it, you can call it out. And that's what's happening here. Paul sees this evil spirit in this slave girl and he calls it out. He says, I command you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And it came out that very hour. So like that very moment or that very within that hour. Paul has been given authority. When you and I are seeking Jesus, in other words, seeking to do his will, which is also seeking Jesus, we grow in our authority. We are growing in the authority of God the more we seek God. But unfortunately, we start attracting all kinds of attention to ourselves, including negative attention. And this is what's happening. So, so Paul, he's, Paul is like this one guy. He doesn't get distracted. He's, he's got his eyes on the prize, you know? He's not flirting with sin. He's not falling into sin that we know of, right? If it is, it might be a little disobedience, but not in the way of like, you know, falling in the, the swamp of sin. And he's got his eyes on the prize and he's just following the spirit as the spirit calls him to do this, to do that, to do this, to do that. And it's just amazing to see this, this kind of how uh, this apostle deals with the spiritual world around him or the demons around him. And so God has given Christ, because when you're in the will of God, you have authority. When you're walking in God's ways, walking in his path for your life, you have authority. If you're not in the will of God for your life, you lose authority. How much authority? I don't know. But I think you lose authority. You only have authority when you're walking in Christ's path for your life. And so he says, I command you. He says, I have this authority in the name of Jesus. This authority has been given me, not by man, not by some degree, not because I took some class, not because I got some Bible college degree or something like that not because i got seminary not because i got some certificate not because these people like me and i got my eldership and whatever he says i command you in the name of jesus christ to come out of her now there's entire ministries based off of this we'll get into that in a second and the and the demon obeyed the demon in her obeyed and then came out in her in that very hour going back there's so many ministries on casting out demons. And when I read this, I don't read this as like when I see those ministries like screaming at people because whether that this is actually happening or not, I don't know. I don't believe this is always a case because I've seen ministries that take this beyond the next thing. They, they basically say, hey, if you lust, if you have a lusting heart, basically you have a demon in you that's just our flesh that's just the weakness of our flesh if if you um have fear in your life you're you have a demon in you you know and that's not what paul is getting at this woman actually had a demon in her she actually had a demon controlling her like a puppet not to mention these men that she was working under so there's a difference between just having sinful thoughts and desires. I have sinful thoughts and desires all the time, but I don't follow through with them. That does not mean that I have a demon in me. 
Whereas actually having a demon and committing, like she was actively engaging in fortune telling and, and uh, divination. She was actually doing it. Hear me out? And I think we should repent when those thoughts hit our mind, whatever those thoughts are, right? I'm trying to read what somebody wrote. Yes, we struggle not against flesh and blood, but against rulers and against authorities in heavenly places. Amen. And so that's what's constantly going on. And so this woman, this little girl, she actually has the demon in her. Okay. And Paul casts that demon out. Now she's free from the bondage of fortune telling. Did you know sin is bondage? Sin is just straight up bondage. You are, once you partake of that fruit of sin, so to speak, that demon enters you and you commit the act of sin. Sin starts in the thoughts, starts in the mind. The devil, the devil is always after your mind. One of the biggest battles that I think we all struggle with, because that's what the Bible says, nothing is uncommon to any of us. <laughs> the thing that we all struggle with is controlling the mind because the world is constantly trying to get our attention. Our own flesh is trying to get our attention. Other people's flesh are trying to get our attention. Some willingly and some unknowingly. The, there's spirits in the air that are trying to get into our, our attention, which is to get in our mind, which is to throw unwholesome or unholy thoughts in our mind. And if we just don't, if we just allow those thoughts to sit there, and we start chewing on them, that's just our nature. We're like cattle. We're like sheep. We just chew on whatever's put in front of us. Whatever just rests in our thoughts. That's why we got to constantly stay in the scriptures. And when you start chewing on those thoughts, what begins to happen is you start meditating on it and it grows and it brings forth sin and then you commit the act. You got to protect your thought life. And so clearly this girl did not protect her thought life. And boom, she chewed on something. She believed a lie, long story short. And then she became a slave to the demons. The demons want us to be their slaves. So we have this battle going on, right? We have the apostle Paul who's soaking in the Holy Spirit, trying to get recharged and prayed up till she shows up, <laughs> right? And then we have this demon. She's a slave to a demon. You could be a slave to a demon or you can put the demons and make them your slave, right? And we do this in the authority of God and the will of Christ. May I say the, the authority of Christ and the will of God. And so this girl is totally a slave. And so you're standing on one or the other side. The truth will set you free, Jesus says. And we are here to proclaim she was right. These men are servants of the Most High God who proclaim to you the way of salvation. Not all attention is good attention. I mean, I don't imagine that she's telling, oh, they're here to proclaim the way of God. Let's go. Let's let's all convert and let's all follow Jesus. No, she's she's a she has a demon in her. She's trying to get people to not follow this guy. But at the same time, she's telling the truth or the demon in her. <laughs> Strange. I don't want to get into that theology right now. But <laughs> with that being said, uh, I'm done. I, I could go on, but I don't want to just beat the bush. <laughs> so let's pray. <laughs> Father, we just thank you for this word. Uh, so interesting just to give us that wisdom of what's really going on around us and the authority that you alone can give us not by any man or person but by your holy spirit and your promise 
Father, bless this word, bless this message. Let it go out, let it be fruitful. We pray this in your mighty, mighty, holy son's name, Jesus Christ. Amen. And God bless.